Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 46. Test wiring the two lamps to the dynamo and I am not happy with the configuration and will be changing it in the next episode. As far as I am aware these are not commercial items, possibly made by the man who built the plant. They look quite good and they just plug into the board but you can lift them out for transport purposes. To connect up these lights to the dynamo I'm going to use some of these. I intend to use electrical block connectors of this type. I've chopped a couple of pieces off but I'm actually going to use three sets. The first thing to do is to sort the wiring out and tidy it up. But don't do it this way, a small mini drill is far too fast for this job. Normally I would use a larger electric drill that I have which runs far slower than this one does. Anyway at least the wires are twisted together. I'm not actually going to use this wiring for the finished job for the simple reason it is solid core wire and there's a high probability that it could fracture quite easily. This first experiment is just a mock-up to see whether the system works. Here I'm stripping the insulation off the end of the wire, first on one lamp and then the other. These lamps just plug into holes in the corner of the plant and here is an example, very neat, very simple. The wires poke through the hole into the cavity underneath the steam plant. And as can be clearly seen here, the wires are far too long. I will need to shorten them. Underneath this very well made baseboard, burnt into the wood, it says handcrafted by Dave Connery. I assume it's Connery. It's quite hard to make out. The original builder of this steam plant does have some YouTube videos. Just go onto YouTube and type in Model Steam Engines by David. You can then see the plant working in its original condition before it was sent to me in many pieces. I need a system where I can lift the plant up and drop it down so I can work on the underside and I'm actually using a box full of cutting tools. It's exactly the right size to support the end of the boiler. Once again I'm using my small Proxon motor tool to twist the wiring together. Note to self, do not do this. Unlike me, make sure that your other slower speed electric drill is fully charged. These lengths of copper wire are not solid core, they are stranded and much more suitable for the job. After cutting back the insulation, I fit the wires into the dynamo's electrical terminals. After first threading it through the hole down to the underside of the baseboard. This was a very fiddly job and I had to find the other screw that had got lost. Here are the two wires firmly clamped in position to the respective electrical terminals on the dynamo. For the electrical terminals underneath the board, I'm going to use a set of these connectors. Three double blocks to be exact. And I'm wiring this using the same type of electrical cable that I used on the dynamo. I want to give the new owner some flexibility for making extra electrical connections if required. This clip shows all the electrical cable cut to the correct length and the plant is upended again resting on my toolbox. Before wiring the connectors I put a couple of screws in ready to screw this underneath the baseboard. And here is the connector screwed to the underside of the baseboard. It's time for a test run I think. For the first run I've wired the lights in parallel but I really think they maybe need to be wired in series. The first thing that happened was the belt flew off and then the belt suddenly stabilised. As you can see everything's rotating freely but the lights are not lighting. It would appear that there's too much of a load across the dynamo. Even when I shot it out with the screwdriver it doesn't make any difference. I think parallel wiring is not the answer. It's really not important at this stage because as I mentioned earlier I'm going to change the solid core wire from the lamps. But before I do that I will do a quick series test to see if the lamps light up in series rather than parallel. I prefer parallel wiring really because if you wire in series and one of the bulbs blows the other one won't work either. I'm pleased to say that my drive belt is working beautifully with the three staples in position. I think I'm going to make a video all about making drive belts for miniature steam engines. 
My friend Andrew at Black Orchard Leather has sent me a video showing me how to stitch leather together, which, believe it or not, I didn't know how to do. Luckily, my staple idea seems to work very well indeed. These are the smaller number 10 size staples. Here are the lamps with the bulbs pulled out a little way. You can see the construction. This is only a short video because unfortunately I wasn't too well on the day I made this video. But don't forget, if you want longer videos, just watch the playlists and watch them back to back. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.